In the videos that I share with you guys where I explore art programs in virtual reality, one of the most common questions people have been asking me is, can you animate in virtual reality? And if you can, Will you? I'm very excited to say I've just gained beta access to an in-development animation program in virtual reality, which I believe is the first ever VR animation program. And today, we're going to see what we can do with it. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to be using Anim VR, which is obviously short for animation virtual reality, I guess. Shout out to the folks who are developing it. I'll put a link in the description to their website. But of course, uh, I want everyone watching this to keep in mind that as usual, I need to give the disclaimer that virtual reality art programs and animation programs are very new. They're usually in beta, they often have flaws, and they are in the early stages of their development and iterations. Just, I don't know, have some leniency, and perhaps if you have feedback, this could be a great forum to share in the comment section things that you would love to see in a virtual reality animation program based on what we use and what could be missing or what works well. So without further ado, let's jump into virtual reality and create our first ever VR animation. This feels intense. <laughs> okay, here we are. This, I guess, is the home screen for Anim VR. So let's start off by having a bit of play. I believe, yes, that just pulling the trigger draws. This is an interesting brush. Now we have the cogs here, which bring up settings. How do you change brush settings? Whoa, okay, so I'm clicking this. It seems to be adding frames. Okay, this seems to be the undo button. This seems to be a something button. Okay, so we have some frame manipulation tools. If you hold this button here, this little circle -y dot, and we have some timeline buttons. We can add a new layer, delete a layer. There doesn't seem to be any user interface assistance, which is a bummer. So I can draw. My question is, how can I change my brush? It's not letting me do anything. I'm genuinely confused. Um, all right, based on what I know, let's just like draw a circle here, click trigger on the left hand, and you can see that we have a bit of an onion skin. So I'm just going to click trigger a few times. So we're creating a basic sort of animation of a water balloon falling, I guess. And then we bounce back up. All right, that's my animation so far. Click play. Boom. Boom. Okay. See, that's kind of fun. Look at that. I've got a little bouncing water balloony ball. It's bouncing off something up here for some reason. What happens if I draw while that's animating? Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. It like creates the strokes. Now that could be useful because you can create little particle animation bits while it's animating. I will undo that though because I don't care to have those. But that's interesting. At least we figured out something pretty primitive. Now I'd, I really want to know, I can see these brush settings but they're teasing me. How can I change the brush settings? I have no idea. How do you change the brush settings? All right, I could be missing something. I'm gonna reset this program. I'm just gonna like close and reopen it. All right, let's see if Anything's well. Aha! Yes. Okay. So it was a bug. So if I press this, all of a sudden I have a pointy. Oh my goodness. Okay. If it doesn't work, try turning it off and on again. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Okay. So now we can explore the brushes. This is the default brush. We have a sphere brush, basic sphere, cube brush, basic cube. It can change the brush size. We have a point brush. Let's make it really clear so you can see actually what they do. We'll select a clear color. We'll go blue. So we have this blue brush. It's sort of shadeless. Cube brush. Point brush. And we have the lightning brush. Okay. Interesting. So it's not animated, but it's trying to go for that effect. Well, obviously it's not animated because you actually animate it yourself. Uh, duh. Silly me. Quill brush. This is the, okay. So this is the one we started off with. Paper brush. Flat brush, pretty straightforward. The pattern brush. And then we have taper shape. Okay, so let's say we draw with a cube and we turn off taper shape. You get that much more rigid look. You can change the opacity of the brush. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm just happy that we can make stuff now. <laughs> that, br that bug was not good. Whoa, oh my God, that's jarring. How do I undo that? That was a very bright, shocking red to change the background to. Okay, so there's some onion skin settings, and then we have saving and loading. 
Reset scene, let's do that. All right, so let's do a little practice animation to get used to the tools. I wanna to have a watering can which is pouring water. So I guess this is less of a sculpting tool and more of a drawing tool because there's no shading in the shape I'm drawing. If I wanna create some water, what should I use? Maybe I should use lightning. That definitely has more of a watery look, doesn't it? I'm gonna want this to stay perfectly still. So let's add a new layer of some sort. Timeline and let's add a new layer. Now when I resize and draw some water coming out. I can click to add a new frame and I'm just clicking to draw new frame, new frame, new frame. So let's play that. Oh, look at that, it's pouring some water. And then the water's gonna start wrapping up. All right, there we go, let's play. Water's pouring. We've run out of water. Oh, let's pour again. Okay, cool, so we have a loop. Now here's the interesting thing. Let's see if we can use that thing that it did. You can sort of draw while it's animating. Here you go, this is my rough little water pour moment. Super basic, obviously, <laughs> but I figured out how to make something that doesn't move and something that does, which is good, that's good to know. Screw this, let's make something actually super cool. Let's reset the scene, and I wanna make a stick figure animation because that is, in my opinion, the best way to learn how to animate in a new program. We're gonna make a concrete area of ground. This is gonna be a little platform. I can resize it, here we go. And I'm gonna animate two stick figures fighting on this platform. I'm gonna have uh, the classic blue stick figure versus green stick figure. I think that's the way to go. Okay, so this stage is gonna say still, so let's go to our options and add a new layer, blue and green. Actually, the green should be a separate layer to the blue. So I'm just gonna <laughs> undo that. Do I have an eyedropper? I don't think I have an eyedropper, that's frustrating. Oh, I do have an eyedropper. It's that. Okay, so I've eyedropped it. Let's make our first pose. So this is my beginning stick figure. I'm gonna animate this dude first before I touch the other dude. I actually wanna animate the head separate to the body because I don't wanna change brush sizes. So let's go, let's erase this head, I wish it was more specific. I'm just gonna undo all the way up until I drew the head. One step at a time, we're familiarizing ourselves with this and that's, that's part of the fun. So we have a body. Okay, let's do this new frame and I'm gonna have him start to lean back, ready to swing. And you can sort of rock back and forth between the frames by pressing this little trigger here. Okay, so we have this dude, he sort of steps back. I need a few frames pretty close together so there's not much motion as he just shifts his weight. So we have him arching back and then we can add stamping forward. His front arm is gonna be swinging and I'll be giving him a smear just by sort of filling that in. I'll add a smear to his leg as well. So then we have one frame where it's like zoom. In fact, I wanna just add to that smear because the next frame is gonna be an impact frame. I'm gonna keep this swing arc in there. So that's the whack. So we go back and he has the swing and obviously his weight has been thrown forward. So he's gonna step forward and now he's gonna start to stand up again as his foot comes down and his arm can start to return. Let's play this to check it. So that's kind of cool, look at that. We've got a boom, big swing forward. I feel like this back leg moves a bit slow, but there's not too much I can do because I don't think manipulation or erasing is very clean at the moment. All right, so it's gonna start to stand up. Let's just make sure that this is going in the right direction, so boom. I don't wanna make the same mistake again twice. I want this other leg to move quicker into position. Boom, oh, that's fun, this is fun. And the cool thing is you can change angles. That's so cool. I am drawing with him sort of leaning to the left a bit, but I don't know, I'm just gonna keep going with what I've been doing. He does end up a bit shorter than he starts off, like he starts off with longer limbs. But it's a bit tricky, cause like, it's not something I can manipulate easily, so I'm just gonna have to deal with that. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and add the head, and this should be pretty simple. I'm just gonna make a larger brush size and maybe shrink the stage somewhat. Just roughly drawing the head in positions now. And there we go, I think that's it. So let's hit play. Boom, there we go, we have a little stick figure! And he takes a swing! Okay, that's fun. Do you know what it's time to do? It's time to make someone get pummeled into the ground. Oh yeah, man, this makes me feel like I'm 12 years old again making flash cartoons. New layer, Mr. Green is gonna get a bloody nose. I think I need to flick through the frames just to see. Okay, so the impact is here. Maybe he'll be getting up off of the ground. Oh, that's harsh. So this guy's gonna be struggling to his feet because they've already had a bit of a stick figure battle. So 
is starting to get up. The question is, is he still lined up for the hit? Yeah, I think he is, but he just can't move very much. Next frame, he's gonna have to stay sort of there, maybe even come forward slightly. And in this bit, he'll probably look up and be like, what? If his head's gonna be here, maybe I should continue with that motion and have his head be pushed down. Oh wait, it's a swing around, isn't it? Yeah, so it's not just going down, it's, it's as a hook. So this will be more like, Hur. legs are up like this. His legs are out here. Okay, this is gonna make much more sense. Boom, he hits the ground again. I'm gonna have to redraw this floor area. Although I may not, I may be able to just position them on the actual ground. So this floor is just my guide for now. All right, I'm gonna make a few frames of just him sliding. And his arms will be dragging a bit with the motion. So we have the green dude's body in play now. So if I hit play, boom. So now I need to add some real impact by giving him a head. So he's slowly getting up. We'll give his head a smear. <laughs> boom. <laughs> ah, so I've made a stick figure fight in VR. Yay! Oh, it's missing blood. It's missing blood. Okay. Ah, oh, this really takes me back. It's a good old stick figures on new grounds. All right, we have some blood. Actually, you know what? Let's go, uh, let's add some taper. There we go. Okay, so when I animate blood on a PC, uh, usually I do it one drop at a time. So I'll start off with like one of the bigger ones, like this drop here. And basically you just follow frame after frame, a bit of a trajectory. And then because this is sort of VR, I don't want to like paint the ground, but I'll have it fade out. And then we go back, we pick another blood spot and we want it to follow a different trajectory in 3D space this time because you know, VR and all that fun stuff. It's good to have them flow at different speeds too. So this one might slow down a bit in midair and then sort of speed up. Then we come forward to this one, which is gonna be coming forward towards us a bit. More like here. Wash, rinse and repeat, you get the idea. And I think that's all of them. Boom, look at that. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it, look at that. This poor guy. Let's have a bit of whiplash blood. Let's ha have a bit of blood sort of coming off his face. Like this. Okay, you ready? With blood. Boom! <laughs> I love it! Look at that! Oh, that's intense. <laughs> oh, this is so cool! Oh, wow! This is nifty. All right. Now I want to delete the ground. Select frame one. I'll delete this. There we go. Now we can resize the whole thing. Look at that! They're like little people! Killing each other. Oh, I love it. Oh my goodness <laughs> Boom now first of all, let me save this because I don't want to lose it. There we go click. Hey look it actually shows Oh, and there's other people's animations. There's like a community thing or unless these are like defaults that it gives you as examples These are okay and all you know, and I don't mean to brag but boom come on. <gasps> I love it All right, I'm gonna record a gif you ready? Let's go back to frame one. And, huh, boom, perfect. <laughs> Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of my experimenting with Anim VR. As you can tell, I have this lovely VR goggle face, my favorite thing about virtual reality. <laughs> now it is worth mentioning once again that this is the first beta version of this program. There's gonna be refinements and additions and removals and whatever. I can see a lot of potential in this sort of experience with a little more streamlined ease of use with the tools and perhaps some refinement with the tools themselves. I will give huge credit to the developers. First of all, thank you for including me in the beta and I hope you enjoyed this video but beyond that they should get some huge kudos for simplifying the incredibly complex process that is having a UI that serves animation hand-drawn animation specifically and I think they've done a really good job obviously I'm very new to the tool itself so uh, there's a bit of familiarizing I can do to you know get acquainted with it better but all that aside this was all just for fun and I hope you enjoyed it leave your suggestions in the comment section for a doable but cool VR animation you might like to see in the future subscribe if you haven't I do VR stuff here and a whole bunch of art and fun other stuff too thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you later make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and while you're at it check out my shop where i sell ebooks brushes photo references video courses and more there's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel daily jazza that's it for now and until next time i'll see you later